Barkley, he's the head of the Barkley House. Agnes Barkley is his devoted and loving spouse. They've got kids, Terry, Roger, and Chester, too. And all of them are Barkleys, through and through. Cause they're the Barkleys, and they're okay. And Arnie Barkley, with a very open mind, is always first to let you know his own opinionated ways. But even though he may grumble and get up tight, just remember Arnie Barkley's bark is worse than his bite. And now the Central High debating team is proud to present its final member, Miss Terry Barkley. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. That's my daughter. I know, Mom. I'm your son. Relax, Mom. It's only a high school debate. Honorable judges, worthy opponents, ladies and gentlemen, the subject under debate is women's rights. It's my opinion that women should have the right to compete with men for jobs. Women should be considered equal to men and should have equal opportunities. I wonder what's keeping your father. Don't worry, Mom. He said he'd be here right after work. Oh, I hope he's not late. He wanted to hear Terry speak. Oh, boy. If I miss my daughter's speech, she'll never forgive me. And if I get a ticket for speeding, I'll never forgive her. Oh, what a predicament. <laughs> Made it at last. In conclusion, the Declaration of Independence clearly gives us the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Oh, there's your father. Excuse me? Pardon me? Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Did I miss much? Terry just finished. You're too late, dear. Yeah, no wonder. Those working women made me late. Women drivers blocking traffic, women on the bus crowding the aisles, women on the streets jamming the intersections. Women don't belong working. They belong in the home. Uh, what did Terry speak about? Women's right to work. What? <laughs> Congratulations, Miss Barkley. The judges rule in favor of women's right to compete with men for jobs. I object! I object! Arnie, please! Oh, come on, Dad. The debate's over. Yeah, don't start anything, Dad. Well, she's the one who started things. My own daughter, talking women's lib. She only believes in women's rights. Women belong at home. We all belong home. Let's go there, dear. <laughs> and furthermore, women just can't compete with us men. They're not as smart as we are. Right, Agnes? You're wrong, dear. That proves my point. If you were smart, you'd agree with me. <laughs> Not only are men smarter than women, but they're stronger and more capable. <laughs> oh, this lock is stuck. That's because you're upset, Dad. Let me try. I can open a lock. Sometimes a woman's touch can help. What do you think now, Dad? I think a woman built that lock. <laughs> oh, you women have the life. Just sitting around all day, watching TV, while we men go out and work. A housewife has a lot to do, too, Dad. There's cooking, cleaning, shopping, sewing, and making your dinner. That's nothing compared to driving a bus. I'd like to see us switch jobs for just one day. Why don't you take him up on it, Mom? Huh? Or drive my bus? That's a man's work. I'm happy doing my housework. But if I wanted to be a bus driver, I should at least have the opportunity. That's women's rights. Okay, your opportunities come. Thanks, Dad. I have to drive the bus tomorrow. And if my boss agrees, 
You can have the job. Do it, Mom. Show him. Oh, dear. I don't know. I mean, you'd make a great bus driver. Sure. You still have your chauffeur's license from driving that school bus once. Very well. I'll do it. Tomorrow, I'll drive the bus, and you do the housework. Well, we better get some sleep. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. Yeah. Mom's going to be our dad, and Dad's going to be our mom. I'll have the last laugh when I spend the day tomorrow lounging around and watching TV. <laughs> well, I'm off to work, dear. I'll be home at 6. I know what time I get off work. Bye-bye, children. Don't forget to help your father in the house. Bye, Bye. Mom. Don't worry about me. Who's going to help you drive my bus? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Arnie, dear. Okay, here's my schedule. 9 o'clock, make the beds. 9.17, dust. 9.32, vacuum. Then do the laundry, shop, cook, and then watch TV. You think it'll be that easy for him? We better stick around in case it isn't. You know what happens to the best plans of mice and men. And my pa. Can we help you, Dad? No, thanks. I'm doing okay by myself. <laughs> Wow, that was great, Dad. Bed making was my specialty in the army. It's see busy. Now for the dusting. Quick, what time is it? It's 9.03. You're 14 minutes ahead of schedule. Swell, that'll leave more time to watch TV. <laughs> Morning. Is the lady of the house in? You're talking to him. Very funny. Well? I'm selling magazines. You're not on my schedule. That interruption cost me 30 seconds. Who is it now? It's Mrs. Beagle. Yes, what can I do for you, Mrs. Beagle? Uh, may I borrow an itsy bitsy cup of sugar, please? Sugar's fattening. <laughs> How can I get my housework done? Let's stay out of his way for a while. Right. Let's see. Gotta dry the dishes, make gelatin for dessert tonight, and fix lunch for the kids. Hmm. Hand drying these dishes will take too much time. Aha! I got it! Aha! <laughs> Who says hair dryers just have to dry hair? <laughs> now for the strawberry gelatin. <laughs> now what? What? I'm sorry, Mrs. Yaphound. Agnes is out. But I don't have time to gossip. Oh, boy. While she's yakking, I'll fix lunch. Let's see now. One sandwich for Terry, one for Roger, one for me. And five for that chowhound Chester. I wonder if Mrs. Yapound has finished yapping. Huh? Oh, boy. I'd better hurry up with my vacuuming. Oh, no, not again. How do you do, ma'am? Uh, oh, I mean, sir. <laughs> Sorry. I represent the Happy Housewife Brush Company. I don't want any Happy Housewife Brushes. <laughs> ah, thank you. I knew you'd welcome me into your home. <laughs> hey, let me show you a few of my brushes. Now, here's an electric combination pot and oven cleaner. Get out! For a big mouth like you, a toothbrush. <laughs> Get out or I'll call the police. Uh-uh, just a minute. With each purchase, you get this beautiful free shower cap. My vacuum! <laughs> My brushes! That'll cost you $40. 
<laughs> On second thought, I uh, uh, keep them with my compliments. I better pull a plug. My whole schedule just went up in smoke. We heard an explosion. Look at this mess. What happened, Dad? Nothing. Compared to the trouble your mother's probably having on my bus. And next stop, Main Street. Oh, what a lovely dress. Uh, run out and buy it, dear. I'll wait. You're holding up the bus until she buys a dress. Oh, I just couldn't let her miss a bargain like that. <laughs> Does this bus go to Elm Street? Uh, no, sir. That's way off my route. You'll have to change to another bus. Well, I don't have time to wait for another bus. My wife is waiting for me on the corner. Oh, you poor man. In that case, I'll take you there. <laughs> We're going in the wrong direction. What are you doing? I'm just taking this nice man to meet his wife. Well... If you're giving door-to-door -door service, drop me at Wagner Street. Take me to Force and Maple. Colonial Avenue. Drop me off at the post office. Where's he in Victoria? Uh, let's see, Wagner Street, Fourth and Maple, post office. Oh, dear. Driving a bus is harder than I thought. I hope Arnie's having an easier time with the housework. You're back on schedule, Dad. Yeah. But I still have to go to the laundromat with all this wash. And then go to the supermarket. Wait, Dad. I'll go to the supermarket for you. Oh, no, no. That would be cheating. I'm not supposed to have help. I sometimes do the shopping for Mom. Okay. Hop in, Terry. <laughs> Can we help you with the laundry? I don't want to cheat. Do you help your mother with the laundry? In a way. We help to get the clothes dirty. In that case, let's go. <laughs> Let's see now. Two cups for every four pounds of wash in hot water. One cup for every three pounds in soft water. Well, I can't figure this out. We'll use a whole box and get them nice and clean. <laughs> now let's reserve a big dryer. Hey, here's one. This one's mine. No! I wash! <laughs> the hell? Stop this thing! Ooh! Ah! We got you, Dad. <laughs> Look what you did to my clean laundry. I didn't do it. She did. <laughs> hey, Pop. Look. Yikes. <laughs> oh, no. Do you think I put in too much soap? <laughs> Will you help me out of here? <laughs> this is getting to be a habit. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but I'll sure be glad when Agnes gets home tonight. <laughs> Dinner saved. Wake up, Mom. Ooh, step to the rear of the bus. Oh, my. I dreamed I was still working. Okay, gang. Dig in. What? What is it? It's chicken. So am I. I don't think I'll eat it. That's okay with me. That leaves more for me and your mother. I'm too exhausted from driving to eat. Oh, I don't know how you do it, Arnie. <laughs> To tell the truth, honey, housework is tough, too. You know, you women don't have it as easy as I thought. Well, we've both learned our lesson, dear. From now on, you work and I'll stay home. You got a deal, Agnes. Boy, I can't wait to get back to my job driving my bus. Hello. Mrs. Barclay, this is Mr. Airedale. It's your boss, dear. Mrs. Barclay, we've received... Hundreds of phone calls and telegrams about your service to the passengers. Oh, I'm really sorry, Mr. Airedale. About what, dear lady? They're all praising my new woman driver. Just listen to this. Commendation to Agnes Barkley for showing courtesy and consideration. And it's been signed by all your passengers. I've decided to replace Arnie with a woman driver 
permanently. And that woman, my dear, will be you. But, Mr. Rantail, you've got other men on the job. Why are you replacing me? Because, Arnie, my boy, it was your, and I might add, great idea. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't want to take Arnie's job. My place is in the home. Well, if you don't take the job, I'll replace him with another woman. Bye. Uh, but, Mr. A oh, he hung up. Gosh, Dad lost his job. I'll have to keep driving your bus, dear. Well, I'm not going to keep doing your housework. Well, I don't like it either. What else can we do? I'll find some way to change his mind. I'm not going to stay home and do all the cooking. I hope not. We'll all starve. <laughs> I've got to think of a way to get my job back. I hope you think of one soon. I have to go to work. Uh, goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Agnes. Boy, I'll go bananas doing women's work. Wait, I've got it. I'll pose as a woman and apply for my own job as a woman driver. Wouldn't that be deceitful? I'm posing as a woman at home, so what's the difference if I pose as one on a bus? I don't think it's... Come on, help me get into your mother's clothes. You really shouldn't. What can we do? There's no arguing with a woman. I heard that. Come on, kids, give me a hand. Oh, I hope that nosing neighbor Beagle doesn't see me in this getup. <laughs> Good luck, Pop. Beagle! for a job of woman bus driver. Oh, well, we have one. And if she works out, I just might hire you two. Oh, thank you, thank you. Bartley! Oh, my wig. Get out of here before I throw you out. That's no way to treat a lady. Out! Please, Mr. Raredale, couldn't I have my old job back? I could pose as a woman. The passengers will never know. Bartley, you'll get your job back when you win this contest. What contest? The community's Mother of the Year contest. <laughs> he said he'd give me back my job when I'm voted Mother of the Year. It's all my fault. If I hadn't debated on women's rights, this never would have happened. And don't blame yourself, dear. I didn't want this. I just wanted equal opportunity. Hey, Roger Chester. Come on, I've got an idea. What's up, sis? I got a brainstorm. Dad'll get his job back when he's voted Mother of the Year, right? Yeah. So we'll enter him in the contest and get him voted Mother of the Year. But the Mother of the Year is supposed to be a woman. If I can argue for women's rights, I can argue for my father's rights, right? Right. Let's enter his name on the ballot. Let's go. Right on. Yes, this is the contest headquarters. But you can't enter your father for Mother of the Year. If a woman should have the right to compete with men, a man should have the right to compete with women. Well, you do have a point there. Then you'll put his name on the ballot? Very well, but I doubt if he'll win. Just leave that to us. Come on, we've got the perfect slogan. Father for Mother. <laughs> but you've got to vote for my father for Mother of the Year. I can't talk now, Terry. I have to practice. Bobby! <laughs> Will you vote for my father? I'm voting for my mother. Well, if you vote for my father for mother of the year, I'll vote for your mother for father of the year. Oh, okay. Thanks. See you later. Hello, Americans. A vote for my father is a vote for all humanity. For all the glorious ideals we cherish so dearly. Beat it, Chester. That clubhouse is closed. There's no other like my father. father. <laughs> In a moment, we'll have the results of the local election for the Mother of the Year. This year, one of the candidates is a man, Mr. Arnie Barkley, or should I say, Mrs. Arnie Barkley. I'd go down there and punch him in the nose. If 
my hands weren't sore from washing dishes. Just a moment, folks. Here are the results. And the winner is my mother. Barney Barkley came in second. And a close third was Mrs. Tough luck, Dad. Sorry you didn't win. You might have lost the election, Daddy. But you'll always be a winner in this house. Thanks, kids. You should be elected Children of the Year. Hello? Barkley, I just heard the election results. I know, and you call to gloat. No, sir, I call to say that any man who wants his job bad enough to run for Mother of the Year deserves to have his job back. <laughs> Report for work first thing tomorrow. Yes, sir. Hooray! So am I. And I promise never to debate on women's rights again. You debate anything you want, honey. After all, if I didn't have the right to run for Mother of the Year, I might have ended up your mother for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs>